Welcome to Guys and Bets. We are almost set to finish off week five in the NFL. Ian McMillan, you and I sat here, oh, six, eight weeks ago, and you told me uh -oh. that the Atlanta Falcons uh -oh. were going to make the playoffs. You got to bring that up right now. Yeah, the Falcons suck. They stink. I hate them. Dan Quinn should have been fired as soon as the final whistle blew on Sunday. They're a disgrace. 53 points yeah. against from a team that hadn't been breaking 18 points. He blamed their coordinators. He fired all their coordinators. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to call the defense myself. So he appointed himself defensive coordinator. And then he just gave up 55 points to the Texans. Yee. Not good. Oof. It was not good at all. Um, but how was your betting day? Mine was okay. I got the Bills plus three. Um, I didn't play a whole lot because I was traveling, but um, I was happy with that one. I didn't bet on the weekend. Oh, that's right. You said you weren't going to bet. I had five games in a row last week that I wouldn't call them bad beats, but what they're like, what I call stingers, like hockey games winning in the third period and then losing, the Brewers losing after being up two runs in the eighth, the Braves lost after being up two runs in the eighth, and then it came down to that Rams game. I took money line. I said, if you're a coward, if you don't take the money line, oh. and then of course they literally lose by the one point spread. Of course. So I tweeted out, I said, if the Seahawks win by one point, I'm taking the weekend off betting. So. Lesson learned, I mean, for all you people out there, I mean, sometimes if you run into a lot of bad beats in a row, you got to just take a step back, take a few days off, refocus, and that's where I am today. I'm ready to go. I'm back on the train today. All right, we do have the Monday Nighter in San Francisco. We've got three picks combined for that game. And I'll start with my first pick. It is the Cleveland Browns at plus five. This number has continued to grow, which kind of surprised me a little bit. I think the 49ers are overrated. They've only played in three games. They had an early bye week. Look at this one. The 49ers are nine and nine and eight straight up and one and 16 against the spread in their last 17 as a home favorite. Five and 10 straight up, one and 14 against the spread in the last 15 in that spot overall as a favorite, that is. And uh, that goes back to December 2013. Uh, the 49ers haven't played good teams and they barely got by a couple of them and mostly it was thanks to the teams that they were playing. Uh, I don't think that happens tonight because the Cleveland Browns keep improving outside of their opening game loss, which was very disappointing. Freddie Kitchens and Baker Mayfield et al have uh, have kind of turned it around. They've been pretty good and I think it was highlighted with a 40 to 25 win against Baltimore on the road is where they're back again tonight. So this Browns team has been pretty good. And the big part is that the dogs keep on barking for them. Um, not just the Cleveland Browns dogs, that is. Overall, underdog, 7-6-1 against the spread so far this week, hitting at about 60% for the season. They've got the dog pound, and I like them as an underdog. Yeah, I don't hate that. Um, I'm a little bit torn on what side, because the Browns seem a little bit too obvious. Mm. But maybe we shouldn't overthink it and just take the obvious pick here. So okay. I don't you, hate it. you got a prop for this game? I do have a prop. I'm not usually a big prop guy, but I decided since I couldn't decide on a side or total, uh, I decided to go with a little prop bet for tonight. So let's get into that. I'm going to take Nick Chubb under 88.5 rushing yards at minus 115. This total is just too damn high. That's right. I just brought back a meme from 2013. Going a little old school on you guys. So he failed to reach a total in two of the Browns' four games this year. The two teams he did not reach a total, or he did reach the total against, were the Rams and the Ravens. Both teams with not so great defenses. And I think in just this modern day and age of the NFL, I think 88.5 is too high of a rushing total to set as far as betting goes. Um, San Francisco's run defense, that's something not a lot of people are talking about. They have one of the best run defenses in the league. Now, they've only played three games because they had the bye week last week, but the numbers are still significant. They're allowing just 75 rush yards per game, which is good enough for third in the league while allowing 3.4 yards per carry, which is also tied for third best mark in the league. This defense knows how to stop the run. 49ers also on offense. They're one of the best uh, milkers of the clock, if you will. Uh, they rank second in the NFL in time of possession right now. So in order for Nick Chubb to go over this total, he'll have to carry the ball a decent amount. And for him to carry the ball a decent amount, the Browns will have to have the ball. And it'll be hard for them to have the ball when the 49ers are just running the ball and milking the clock all game. So I think this is a pretty easy prop, to be honest. It's a lock. Nick Chubb, under 88.5 rushing yards. Yeah, as long as he doesn't just break a huge one. That's the big concern, know? yeah. It's pretty like first run of the game, he just busts <laughs> off his 60-yarders. Yeah, that could happen. Fuck it man. could, but I think you're on the right 
track there with your the, your thought process, and that's kind of what brought me to my second pick in this game, which was under 26 and a half points for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, their pass attempt numbers, as you talked about, they like to run the ball. The Niners are near the bottom of the league in pass attempts per game. And interestingly enough, teams haven't been passing the ball against the Cleveland Browns either. Cleveland Browns opponents are near the bottom of the league in pass attempts per game. So that tells us, like Ian said, a lot of this game will be on the ground. Keep the clock moving. Uh, the Browns defense may be a little underrated. They kept both the Rams and the Ravens under 26 and a half points, not to mention the blowout of the Jets. So they've only given up more than that number in their first game this year. And in my opinion, the uh, Rams and Ravens especially are much better offenses than the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I just don't think Jimmy Garoppolo and crew have been able to really get it done. We haven't seen that same repeat of a season from George Kittle. We haven't seen the, uh, you know, Matt Breda really, once people realized he was half decent, they shut him down. So uh, I think the Browns will be okay here. And then you got Cleveland's defensive line play led by Miles Garrett. These guys are getting better every time out. We had questions about their defense coming into the season. We had questions about their secondary, especially. Um, and it seems that they keep getting better and improving and game planning for their opponents. So. All in all, I think the Browns are headed in the right direction, and uh, I think they win this game, and I don't think they're going to have the score 30 points to do it, so I think they keep the 49ers under 26 and a half. Yeah, I think we're going to see another prime time under tonight, to be honest. I like the full game under as well. But. Okay, sounds good. Uh, also, of course, baseball playoffs are underway. Ian, take us to the diamond. Yeah, so... Oh, gonna... wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, time that's right. out. That's right. I always forget the audience poll, and this one was kind of easy to forget because it wasn't much of a poll at all. It was pretty much a unanimous decision. We asked who you were betting on for tonight's game. 71% say the Browns. So why then has this number actually gone in favor of the 49ers? Yeah, that makes me nervous. Um, I think it was, was it last Thursday when it was the Eagles and the Packers, or maybe it was the week before Titans and Jaguars, but we saw a poll just like that where it was like 70 something to 20 something. And, of course, uh, it went the opposite way of everyone thought it was going to. So that makes me a little bit nervous. It's kind of strange how that happens, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, there's no way it's planned or rigged. It's a, it'd be too impossible when you see everything that happens. So it's um, it's quite interesting. And you're probably right. Like The NFL has been so unpredictable. Yeah, depends what you want to do. You want to fade the public, you take the Niners tonight. Or follow the trend of road teams and underdogs, take the Browns. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> who knows? What, you know, what's what's the case? I, I I made my case for the Browns. I like it. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think it's a, it's a big number for them, and they've been really good. I, I'm, I wouldn't mind sprinkling the money line in this game either. Might have to. Might have to. <laughs> I mean, the dogs are barking. It is Underdog Monday. Speaking of underdogs. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of underdogs, <laughs> let's get to my first MLB pick for today's game between the Dodgers and the Nationals. And the Dodgers are surprisingly the underdog, in my opinion. I was a little bit surprised at this, so I will jump all over that. I'm going to get the obvious out of the way here. The Nationals' bullpen absolutely sucks. Last night, they put up Patrick Corbin and tried to hide their bullpen, and we all see how that went. Uh, so I doubt they'll be able to try to hide their bullpen again tonight. This MLB season, the Nationals had the second worst bullpen ERA at 5.68. The only team that had a worse bullpen was the Orioles. This point in itself makes me feel great about taking one of the best offensive teams in baseball as an underdog. Next, Max Scherzer is not himself. I said it before the wild card game and it kind of held true. Max Scherzer has not been himself since returning from injury in late August. His offense and bullpen kind of somehow ended up bailing him out in the wild card game against the Brewers. But I don't see that happening again. He has a 5.16 ERA since September the 1st. That's not good. And finally, the Nationals are slightly ver uh, worse first uh, left-handed pitcher. So they're going up against Rich Hill today, which with Rich Hill's injury problems, it's a bit of a concern for me. But like I said, Nationals are a little bit worse first lefties. This in the second half of the season versus right-handed pitchers, the Nationals had an 845 OPS. Versus left-handed pitchers, they had a 797 OPS. So slightly worse worse versus lefties and that's worth mentioning so give me the underdog Dodgers tonight yeah I, I think that's a good pick I've actually sprinkled the Dodgers minus one and a half which I've seen everywhere from plus 180 to plus 195 I like that I think the you know Washington uh, I think Davey Johnson is completely or Dave Martinez excuse me has completely mismanaged his pitching staff here yeah. he's trying to do it with three pitchers he's trying to use Corbin Scherzer 
and Strasburg and not use the bullpen, and that's not going to work. No. And you can't have guys going on short rest and not knowing if they're, you know, when the relievers do get in there, you know, you can't trust them. Like Alex Cora did it last year and got away with it, but just barely. And I think last night was just a backbreaker for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Ugly game. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sticking with the theme of underdogs, I am going to take the underdog. (laughs) Oh more than one dog. Yeah, they're, like that. they're all out in the yard right now. <laughs> I'm going to take the underdog Tampa Bay Rays with Charlie Morton starting for them. Morton is a Cy Young candidate, although his two former teammates in Houston are probably going to be 1-2 in that voting. But he's been super consistent for the Tampa Bay Rays and does give them a real chance in this game. He's been the starting pitcher for two of the Rays' last three victories. There is the desperation factor. They need to win this game or their season is over. I don't like to play into that too much during the regular season when, you know, oh, these guys are going to get up for this or whatever. But there is a reality to guys who are playing for their season. And they're playing at home where Tampa has won six of the last seven meetings between these two clubs, including this season when they uh, when they took a series at home against the Astros. So the Rays are pretty good at the trop. I'm uh, I'm liking this number. It's actually starting to come down a little bit. So I think we're seeing a lot of money come in on Tampa. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go with it. I, there's no value to me in betting the Astros. Yeah, they might win, but I'm okay going with the underdog here. It is Monday after all. Yeah, there you go. It is Monday. You said it. I like Charlie Morton. Yeah. That's what I'll say about that game. I know. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's that, tough. I don't know. that. Well, it's Zach Greinke going on the other side. Um, he's been hot and cold since being acquired. He doesn't have as much playoff experience as the other two guys on his pitching staff. So uh, there's that as well. Um, and I just love betting plus money on Charlie Morton. Yeah, gotta love underdogs. It's yeah. more fun when you win it on, on, an, on an underdog. Yeah, absolutely. Is your last pick an underdog? Pick? It is not, okay. unfortunately. What do you got? <laughs> so for my last pick, we're going to go Yankees, Twins. I got a first five, under five, at minus 115. So Luis Severino has only pitched 12 innings this season, but he has looked fantastic in those games. He's only allowed two runs across that span. Jake Odorizzi takes the mound for the Twins, and you may not think it, but Jake Odorizzi has actually been the best pitcher for the Twins this year. I mean, statistically at least. His 3.51 ERA, 16 home runs, and 1.208 whip were the lowest marks across all Twins starters this year. And then finally, don't let recency bias uh, fool you. Now this is, I'm kind of going against the grain here because the amount of runs that have been put up in the first a uh, couple games of this series, and they're the two highest or two of the highest scoring teams all season. But I'm not trying to overthink this game, and that's what I'm going to recommend for you guys as well. This this is two very good starting pitchers going at it with a first five total set all the way up at five. So I'm not going to overthink this. I'm going to simplify it as much as possible. Two good pitchers. Just give me the first five under. Let's win it. And move on. All right. Cool. I like it. I think Joe tweeted out that he's on the over though. So. Me and him are on opposite sides of that, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, Joe and Ninja still making their way back from London. Uh, Won't be back until Wednesday, actually, here on the show. So uh, with that, Ian and I will be back tomorrow. Uh, I didn't see any chat uh, questions there. There was one question, and I will put this off to you. I know it's Monday. haven't looked at really uh, college football lines yet. But just what's your gut feeling on uh, Oklahoma in Texas? Texas is plus 11 at home in that rivalry game. Someone in the chat said they thought it was a bit of a high number. It's a lot, especially at home. This is the game that Texas needs to win if they want to have any shot of the college football playoff. Um, I don't know. I, I really haven't looked at it. I, I I didn't. What's the total there? Do you see it? Total is not up right now. Yeah, I, I would think this will be a high-scoring affair. Oklahoma's just been awesome and... Uh, I don't know. I, inside two scores with this Oklahoma offense and a Texas defense that, nah, um, I'd probably lean to Oklahoma there. Even though Texas was my long shot to start the season, they just haven't quite been at the same level as these other teams. Uh, Steve Godden says Jarvis Landry touchdown anytime for plus 187. That's not a bad price. I know Jill found at his book uh, earlier today, Nick Chubb, at even money to score anytime. I think that that's a gift, even though I'm fading him as far as rushing yards go. But for mm-hmm. him to score, that seems like a gift for me at that price. Also, by the way, shout out to Jill. He's been absolutely crushing live betting on the props. It's insane. He got the right uh, uh, first touchdown in last night's game, the Pringle guy, at like 20 to 1. He's betting on 
interceptions, fumbles, turnovers. He's, he's hitting everything, it. man. He uh, he's making a lot of money. So if you don't follow Gilles Galland, G Dog D. Let me try that again. He's G Dog Five Thousand. It's G D A W G Five Thousand uh, on Twitter. He's been absolutely crushing it, man. And he's like tweeting out picks, and then they hit. Yeah, and then like five seconds later, it hits. It's insane. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, there you go. There's his, there's his Twitter. Yeah. Also, shout out to on Thursday show when his mean you someone asked Todd Gurley two touchdowns. And I know. Like, eh, and then he got two touchdowns. So I, I forget your name. I'm sorry, but shout out to you. I hope you ended up betting that. I know. Uh, yeah, we'll have some props and stuff tonight. Uh, missed my question earlier. How did you get hired? Well, Matt, we uh, applied and got a job here, and uh, love it. It's a great place to work. Um, by the way, I'm going to get to that because sometimes there's some. Uh, uh oh. No, there's some kind of. Sometimes people are like, "Oh, you got this wrong." The very best sports handicappers, the best, hit at sixty percent. Sixty percent. We endeavor to get around there, fifty-five, sixty percent. Anyone who thinks that. Anywhere you work or whatever you do, you're going to get you know 90 or 100 percent picks right. It's just not going to happen. So um, yeah, keep your trash talk to yourself, man. Yeah, what is it? Four 52 percent you have to hit. Is it 52 percent at minus 110 to be profitable? Yeah. So the best of the best hit at 60 percent. So and I mean we don't claim to be completely professional better. No, We're man. entertainment. And, hey, if you fade us, making money, fade us, then fade us. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's fine. I just wanted to address that. Don't shouldn't feed the trolls, but shut up. <laughs> Uh, all right. If you uh, missed any of our picks today, here's a here's a recap. Follow us both on Twitter. I am at Chris Ochark. He is at Ian Mac OS. Both of us will be back here tomorrow. Good luck on your Monday Night Football bets. Good luck on your MLB bets. We'll see you guys for the Tuesday show right here on Guys and Bets.